Hey guys, this is the first video in a new series I'm doing called Edit Together Tuesdays, where we edit together on Tuesdays. So if you have any suggestions for editing videos in Lightroom, drop them in the comments below. I would love to hear. And today's video is based on a subscriber question that I got on how to edit super noisy high ISO images. They asked, is there a way of softening the noise while keeping the image sharp and professional looking? And this is a fantastic question because while we typically want to be planning our shoots to photograph in the best light and have a low ISO setting, as you know, not all shoots go perfectly as planned. So if you've ever found yourself cranking that ISO in order to combat low light and are wondering if there's anything that you can do after the fact in post, this video is for you. I'll be sharing my easy three-step process for lowering the noise while also sharpening your high ISO images. And the last step might actually surprise you. So let's dive in. All right, so coming into Lightroom, here's an example of a typical situation that we might find ourselves in. This is one of my couples, Serena and Eddie, and while we capture most of their portraits early in the day for a first look, we also wanted to capture a handful of those just married, newlywed pictures out on their golf course at their venue, but as things sometimes go with weddings, we arrived to the venue a bit late and we weren't able to make it to our location until just as that sun was setting. And I also wanted a handful of dreamy backlight images before I turned them around to work with the remainder of that light as it just totally faded to black. So this required a pretty high ISO. If you look at my settings in the corner, you can see that my aperture was really low, f1.6. Um, 180th shutter speed, and I still needed to have my ISO at 5000. So if we were to zoom in here, you can see it's a pretty grainy photo. So I already have my basic edit applied. If you wanna see more of a full editing tutorial from beginning to end and what I do for my basic edits, I'll also link a couple more videos in the description below. But after you have that general edit, the very first step for editing for a high ISO image specifically is getting the exposure and the skin tones and the overall look dialed in right. And since I'm typically going for a light and airy feel, it takes special consideration for how to do this without adding more grain to the image. So usually I would lift up in these shadows more, but if I do that here, you'll notice things get super grainy, like extra grainy, because it's lifting up in those blacks where we shouldn't be lifting if we have a very noisy image. Instead, I wanna be targeting just those skin tones in the areas where I'm really wanting to lift and brighten. And for that, the best thing to use is the tone curse because it allows us to hold certain tones of the image in place while lifting in other areas. So we'll start by setting just a couple points along this curve. If you want to learn more about curves, I'll link up, I have a full breakdown of how to work with curves if you're unfamiliar with a tool that breaks down curves in a really simple way that's easy for everybody to understand. And uh, this is really one of the most powerful editing tools that Lightroom has, and it's like my favorite tool. So the skin tones are living around this area of the curve. So that's the primary area we're going to want to lift is right in here while keeping these blacks and like the darker areas, the shadow part of our image in place. So we'll go ahead and lift up in those whites, brighten things up a bit. And that's already starting to look really nice. Just a nice smooth curve. Maybe bump the contrast just a little bit. And then sometimes what I do is after I get the general look I'm wanting with curves, I'll come into this area and dial things in a little bit more. And I might just deepen those shadows just slightly, not too, too much. Might be a hair too much contrast. So I'll just kind of dial this in until how I get it how I like it and that's looking pretty good. So this is a very easy way of brightening things up so that we're not adding more noise. And then part two is where the real magic is going to happen when it comes to reducing noise and also sharpening um, our image. And that's coming down into the details panel in Lightroom. And the first thing I wanna do is come into this noise reduction area so we can reduce the noise of our image. And you'll also see that I have 
this little hidden toggle, toggle down, this allows us to choose this and target a part of our image that we want to see zoomed in at 100%. I usually choose one of the eyes and switch portraits. This is like the most important part of our image. And then just so that you can see a little bit better, I'm also going to zoom my actual view at 100% as well. But typically I would have this zoom to fit. So this becomes really handy so that you can always see things at 100% while you're also seeing the full view of your image. And then when it comes to noise reduction, there's two main kinds, luminance and color noise. Luminance is going to be impacting the overall noise based on contrast in your image, the light and dark pixels in a photo. And color noise is going to be impacting the color noise or pixels. So the easiest way to describe this is if I zoom in at 100% and take off Lightroom's default, you'll see that there's a lot of just greeny different colors in our photo. And you're usually gonna see this most with high ISO images where you get this kind of splotchy looking color noise detail or color pixel data in your image. And what I find is Lightroom does a really great job at normalizing this. And now we have a nice even tone where our blue of our image all looks blue without that extra yellow and different pixel data in there. So typically, I'm not doing much in the color um, noise area. It's good to know that it's there in case, you know, for a very extreme image, you might want to dial that up more. But I find that for the most part, uh, Lightroom does a really good job with just its basic settings. So the thing that we're going to be concerned more of is the luminance noise reduction. So if we zoom in onto their faces here, and the main settings that I'm adjusting when it comes to noise reduction is the luminance and the detail. So if I were to bring up luminance all the way, you see it almost creates like this painterly sort of look to our image and eliminates all the contrast of the edge details. So the hairs almost begin to blend together. They're, they're, <laughs> they lose the lines in their face and everything just kind of blends together. So that's not what we want. You want to be really careful to not overdo it with this luminance slider. But let's start around here and then actually let's practice up all the way so you can see what the detail slider does. So the detail slider is essentially decide, like helping Lightroom, tell Lightroom how much of that edge detail that we want to keep the contrast of so that it doesn't get too soft looking. So if I drag this up all the way, it's telling Lightroom, hey, I want to keep some of that edge detail, so don't soften things out too much. So this is really our best friend when we are wanting to get rid of noise in a photo because we're able to bring this luminance slider up a bit higher without the image looking too wonky. As you can see, it's still looking way too smooth and when in doubt go less with these settings rather than more because you never want to have your image look overly processed so i'm going to go ahead and dial this down quite a bit around there is good this is more than i would do on a typical image but since this image is pretty grainy we can go a bit higher and then I would keep the detail up higher when using this much luminance usually my luminance will be maybe around 20, 15, 20 um, on a typical image or, or lower. So I'm not needing as much of that edge detail maintained, but for this image, we'll go a little bit higher. And you, as you can see, if I were to toggle this off and back on again, that adjusts that noise really well in our photo. So next we're gonna come into the sharpening because uh, I always like to do a bit of sharpening, especially if we're going to be doing noise reduction on our image. First, we're going to come into the amount, which is going to adjust the contrast applied to that edge detail from a lot to a little bit. Typically, I like to keep sharpening to under 20. We might go a little bit higher on this image, uh, but we'll see. Let's come in here. I'm just going to bring it up 100%. And then we're gonna come into the radius and the radius is just impacting how thick the sharpening is on those edges. So if I were to drag this up, you can see the edges of the image get really thick. And if I were to drag it down, the sharpening is 
a little bit more fine detail. So something that's good to know for radius is that for close-up images, since the details of the image are bigger, you can get away with a higher radius. And then for images that are a bit zoomed back, maybe full body, you typically wanna go with a bit of a lower radius. What you wanna really look out for is just if your image starts to look like it's haloing at all, you've gone too much with the radius. So around there looks good, maybe slightly higher just to give a little bit more sharpening detail and then we're gonna dial this back a lot. That looks pretty good. Uh, one final thing when it comes to sharpening, really important, is your masking. This is really the holy grail when it comes to sharpening without creating extra noise. For masking, you're gonna want to hold down the Alt or Option key while sliding this. And we're gonna slide this up. This essentially shows the white is the part of the image that is going to get those sharpening effects and the black areas are the areas that are being masked out. So we wanna drag this to the point where it's only sharpening around those eyes, the hair, some of the fine details that we want without getting any of the skin detail. So if we come back, you see it starts getting the skin. Around right here is good just to, to sharpen those eyes. And then, you know, if we just zoom back in a bit, might even be able to bring this up a little bit more. We just don't want to get that halo effect. Come to 100%. And that looks really nice. I'm gonna bring this luminance down even more. It's just getting a little soft in her hair. But I think that that looks really good before and after. So that did a really good job. And then the final like third step that I like to do is adding grain. So Probably not what you were expecting, but this is totally subjective. If you hate the look of grain, you can totally skip this step. But I actually love the look of grain if it has a natural film grain look to it. The key is to control the effect. So for this image, I just want to add a slightly larger grain to the image. And if I zoom in here and bring down the size, you can see this is actually similar to uh, the noise we originally had in our image, which is really small, very tight noise. So the key with grain is I like to keep it between like five to maybe like 15. I don't like to add a ton of grain. It should be a very subtle effect, not like overly done, over <laughs> like fake grain look. And then I like to dial up the size. So, and I'll go a little extreme so you can really see. Um, so that it has more of that thick, like film grain look to it that I really love. And then I'll drag this back down. So if we were to go to 100%, toggle that off and back on again, it kind of blends together with the natural noise of the image to give it a even more filmic look. And I find that this looks really beautiful, not only for color, but also really classic black and white versions of the photo too. And speaking of black and white portraits, is this something that you guys would be interested in seeing a video on? Let me know in the comments below. It's something I'm been considering as a future editing tutorial and also be sure to hit the bell so that you don't miss any other videos in my weekly edit together Tuesday series there's lots more coming and if you enjoy this tutorial also check out these and I'll see you in the next video